Buffalo Plus, your interactive look at the week in football. Brought to you by Connors and Ferris. Welcome into Buffalo Plus, presented by Connors and Ferris, Dan Fates, Mike Catalana. I am Jenna Cottrell. The Bills coming off the bye week, they are rested, they are refreshed, they are refocused as well. Buffalo 4-2 and two on the season. We're at about at the halfway point. Obviously, the Bills hosting the Dolphins this weekend coming up. But, Mike, I want to talk to you about where do you think this Bills team stands as they head into another week of football coming off of that break? They're still really good. They're 4-2. and two. They should be better than that, right? Yeah. The yeah. record should be better. We all know that. That was a tough loss in that. Nashville. Mm -hmm. It's a game I think they believe they should have won no matter how well the Titans have played since. It feels like that game was like three months ago. <laughs> it, it really does. does. It, it right? really does. <laughs> it's By just Thursday and Sunday, it, it felt like this had all blurred into like a month without the Bills playing. Yeah, yeah. that's what it felt like. But there's no reason to panic. Uh, they play a JV schedule for the next few weeks, and then they get themselves ready for real teams that come up. I, I saw a national reporter that said some teams get by weeks. The Bills get a by month. Wow. Yeah. Then and it's the Dolphins, the Jags, mm, and the Jets yeah. for their next three games. Not a bad stretch. It's not exactly a murderer's row of no. competition. No, no. But there's things they want to get together. Yeah. And sometimes that happens against the good teams. Mm -hmm. Right, but it's a little easier to do it against the bad teams. Yeah. And look, we're not jinxing them because we're not playing. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's a very good yeah. point. I that don't know. Mike, we're just a bunch of talking heads. Get a few minutes. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's very true. We did get to talk to Stefan Diggs after practice, and we asked him about where this team stands and how he feels now heading into the second half of the season. And just knowing what kind of team that we have, you know, knowing that the things that we can do better, and looking at the past uh, six weeks or whatever. And saying like, oh, what areas can we be better? And you know, we haven't. I feel like we haven't played our best ball. We played some good ball, but uh, as a unit, you know, we got to keep pushing forward. You know, stay in that little humble area of just, you know, staying at the ground. And everybody knows that we're a good team. But in order to be a good team, good team consistently, you got to be consistent. So, just uh, tighten up in some areas. I love that. To be a good team consistently, you got to be consistent. <laughs> I mean, if that's not a cliche, we're like closing in on. It that. is, but. I I guess because I speak cliche, you <laughs> yes. know, through the years of interviewing guys. But I, I think I know what he meant. Like oh, you absolutely. have to be consistent yeah. in your game yeah. to consistently be a good team. No, completely when agree Stephon with that. When Stefan talks, you got to listen. Yeah, and I think this goes back to this is a team that has always said you have to be humble and hungry because, yes. you know, cliche of the season so far has been it's a week to week league. Or at the end of the day, end of the day. you end got to go day. out there and play on yeah. Sunday. So this was an example, I think. I don't know if they were exactly overconfident, but this is just an example of a, of a Bills team going into Nashville with a ton of confidence and yeah. getting humbled by their play, especially yeah. in the final minute. Yeah, we saw that in the opening of the season yep. against the Steelers, but I do want to talk about that, that game in Nashville a little bit just because we've seen the Bills' offense, I don't want to say immensely struggle in the red zone because obviously they're averaging like nearly 34 points a game but at the same point Mike they went two for five in Tennessee what do you make of that and even Stefan Diggs talked about there's there's things we need to clean up well they had five trips in the red zone in that game they scored two touchdowns twice were short field goals mm -hmm. that they got and then we know what happened on the fifth time when they yeah. couldn't score the touchdown Josh Allen's still been really good right but look at those numbers for the red zone I think a big issue for them in the red zone is running the football. They do not do it effectively no matter how many times they hand the ball off or how few times. That's the only guy who really moves the ball on the ground when they're in close. It's Josh Allen. Uh, but leave it to Emmanuel Sanders. He says, just relax, right? <laughs> You know, I feel like we're scoring points. You know, we're one of the highest scoring teams in the league. And I just think, you know, based off the Tennessee game, we didn't make the proper plays to, to win the ball game. So there is no there is no reason to go into panic mode. I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm not really thinking too much into the red zone. Obviously, you have to, to score points. But I think that, you know, from a scoring perspective, I think that we're doing well in terms of what we do. And he's right. They are doing yeah. well. The Bills are averaging 33.8 points per game. In nearly every single offensive category, the Bills are in the top eight of the league. In first downs per game, third down conversions, rushing yards per game. They're seventh in the league in rushing yards per game. Wow. Can you believe that? That's surprising. Eighth in passing yards per game, sixth in yards per game. All of those things. But then you drop down to where that red zone touchdown uh, percentage is. And like you said, it's 26. But it's not so much, I know it's the, everybody says, well, things get tighter in the red zone. There's less space, there's more guys taking up the space. 
there are guys that are open. On the play that Josh Allen ran for on the third down where he went for the sticks, Emmanuel Sanders was open in the end zone. It's not as much of a scheme thing. I know it's, it's the common thing where you say you got to execute better. There are still plays. There are still guys that are open. It's just they didn't make the plays in Nashville, and that gets amplified but, when you go two yeah. for five in the red zone. Yeah. It is, and the two games they lost, they had opportunities against Pittsburgh, too. They didn't come through in the red zone. Right. But, Jenna, you know, we all know what happens. Dan says it gets tighter, and it does, yes. but it's easier for the defense to play in those circumstances. Correct. They don't have to worry about you getting behind right them. yeah and that does change things a little bit um it's not panic mode no. but when you're looking at this team it's when they can score right yeah. and when they need it uh they don't need it as much i'm going to say this week they don't need it against the jets they don't need it against the <laughs> yeah, jets no. i'm sorry they were considerably better than those yeah teams. but then obviously we know those are things that against bad teams you can get away with and against yeah. good teams you get kind of exposed and, and that's where i think this bye week may have come at the exact right time that is really when you get a chance to break down what you've done the first half of the season and then see okay what are the things we got to fix i remember last year the bills defense got better after their bye yeah they, they were very weak early on in the season they got better as the season progressed i think this could be a time where the red zone offense gets better off their bye they work on yeah. a couple more things and what moving off that bye we asked jordan poyer you know how did they come across that heartbreaking loss he said there's a 24-hour rule he was asked if there's a if it took him 25 hours to get over this and here's what he had to say I think the guys have the perfect mindset coming into the, like I said, we're a mature football team. We're not going to sit here and dwell on something that happened two weeks ago. We're a damn good football team, and we know that. What's the point of of even, you know, thinking about that? You know, that, obviously that, that loss hurt. We're moving on from it. We're ready to go against the Dolphins. Well said. I get it. I mean, yeah. it is the case. Now, it did bother them. And sure. it should bother them. I mean, these guys care a ton. Yeah, absolutely. And what did he say? He was on the beach with his wife and his kid, and he's gone, <laughs> man, I can't believe that. And then you watch yeah. other games. Yeah. They're just like us, except yeah. they're the ones who go out on the field. Yeah. Like, they're saying, I want to get back out there yeah. right away. And I do think you made this point. When you lose the game like that, they don't sulk. No. They're like, I can't wait to get back yeah. out there. But it's not baseball. You don't play every single day. Yeah. And especially heading that into the bye week was one thing. We asked Stephon Diggs how he got over that loss. A little bit of red wine. Yeah. Well, that's what he said. A little bit of wine. Yeah. I, I think he needed that. I think we can all relate. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. Well, no. there's a difference between him with a little red wine and Marshawn Lynch. <laughs> <laughs> saw him on yeah, with the Manning 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 brothers. Yeah. Couple it's shots a little different. Hennessy. Yeah. Before every game. Yeah. No, I think that does hit a little bit different. But you saw there when we talked to uh, Jordan Poyer the fact that Sean McDermott's 4 0 after coming out of a bye. And Dan, yeah. we got to talk this week to the guys about is there anything you see McDermott doing differently during that time off? And I just loved their response on that. Yeah, he said that not really. Like, like they just said he's a great coach. Like, like that nothing changes. And that's what they preach, right? Yeah. Every single week. It doesn't matter who the opponent is. It doesn't matter who you're going up against. Right. It's the same thing. You you do what has gotten you to be a 4-2 and two football team. You do what got you to an AFC championship last year. Yeah, yeah and I think the key thing when you look at this mm -hmm. is when you play before the bye and after the bye, if you get to play a good team like the Titans, there's a chance you'll lose. And when you play a bad team like the Dolphins, there's a good chance you'll win. <laughs> so I do believe next level if analysis. they reverse that, wow. if they would have played the Dolphins pre bye mm. I think they would have won. You know, I Sorry, th if there's Dolphins fans watching, that's not a good football team, six in a row. Well, yep. we're going to talk about them because coming yep. up after the break, two a time in South Beach. Is he on the clock? We'll get into it in the temperature down in Miami. We'll have that coming up after the break. Welcome back to Buffalo Plus, presented by Connors and Ferris. All right, let's talk about this Miami team, because I feel like we talk about Tua Tungavailoa. It was a couple years ago, it was tanking for Tua. Now this is a Dolphins team that has lost six in a row coming into things. They are coming off a heartbreaking loss to the Falcons. Tua had a pretty good game, though. Career yeah. high, four touchdowns. What do you make of him, Mike? I, I think he's a, a tough kid. I think he is a great guy to have on a team. Mm -hmm. I don't know if his physical skills match what you want in a franchise quarterback. Later, I'm going to talk a little bit more about how teams handle franchise quarterbacks or the guys they hope that are that way. But this whole franchise seems to be a little disjointed yeah, in terms of trying way. to figure yeah. that out. And there's pressure on the head coach. There's pressure on the general manager. Mm -hmm. And this team's defense was really good a year ago. And now the defense is struggling. That puts more pressure because what Tua should have had last week was a four-touchdown, come-from-behind win yep. against mm -hmm. Atlanta. Yep. Instead, they let him drive down the field, kick a field goal, and you lose six in a row. I feel like this team, especially you know Tua, 
is a product or a victim of last year's team's sudden success. Yeah. Last year, they, they, they were ahead of schedule. They weren't yeah. supposed to win 10 games. They were supposed to be another really bad team. Tua was still going to be recovering from his dislocated and broken hip, all those things. And all of a sudden, they went on and went on this incredible run. They had some Fitz magic, and they go and win 10 games. And now people are going, well, they're going to win. They could win 10 games again. Yeah. Like, hey, look at this team. You know, they're yeah. really building on something. Not so fast. Now, all of a sudden, what, what Flo? Flo's doing? Yes. Brian Flores. Brian Flores. What yes. he's doing all of a sudden isn't working so well. And, and I think that's just a product of maybe being a little bit too high last year. Yeah. Well, we got to hear from Tua this week. Here's what he has to say about the climate in Miami and how he feels about being the guy for the Dolphins. Uh, I don't not feel wanted. <laughs> that's what I could say. <laughs> You know, it's out of my control, but I have the utmost confidence, um, you know, and trust that, you know, I am the quarterback of this team. And, you know, just off of conversations that I've had, you know, with with Flo and and whatnot, you know, it's obviously stays between us. I don't know if I'd, I'd ever use the word fair because um, really nothing's fair, you know, especially especially in the life that we live, you know, for you guys, media, I mean, it's not fair that you guys only get however many, what, minutes with a player. I mean, for players, it's not fair that we only, you know, you know, we only get praise when we're doing good. You know, I mean, it, it nothing's fair in life. Yeah. I mean, the maturity with that. Yeah. But at the same point, if I were him, I mean, last year it was, you know, what they were doing well and he had made a mistake. It was like, all right, Fitzpatrick was going yeah. in. Like, that's, that's a tough message to and, send. But look at the big message now. Yeah. Next Tuesday is the trade deadline. Yeah. There is a chance that they make a deal for Deshaun Watson. And it's kind of amazing when you think about it because we know where Deshaun Watson is. I mean, none of this is settled. He has massive legal and other issues that the league hasn't stepped in. And Tua's got to hear about it every week. Yeah. Every single week he goes to the podium not only talking about the performance and the losing streak. They've now lost six in a row. They've lost six in a row against the, the, against the Bills. And he's answering questions about Deshaun Watson, who's going to be starting, all of these questions. It is very tough. That's why he was asked the question was, do you feel wanted in Miami? And you heard his answer. I don't not, not feel yeah. wanted, which is pretty much saying, no, I don't feel wanted. <laughs> yeah. because, because Flo had a chance to squash all of these rumors and speculations yeah. earlier Brian in the year Flores. or during the offseason, and he didn't. And he said, Correct. two is my quarterback right now. That's never a ringing endorsement. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, every way you can handle a young quarterback, they've done it wrong. I just think of, like, referring to someone as that, like, oh, you're my boyfriend right now. <laughs> like, that <laughs> yeah. probably wouldn't go you, over well. Hot you, take. You've never <laughs> said that yeah. before? Yeah, maybe a couple yeah. times. <laughs> Uh, you know, Miami is that kind of city, right? I mean, they've got the heat. They've got, I mean, the Panthers are good. They're trying to figure all this out. Mm -hmm. The football team has not been good. And obviously that's caused some issues down there. And a little apathy is setting in. And I talked this week to a guy named Will Manso. He's a sports director at the ABC station in Miami. And I asked him about the fact that Miami as a football team is struggling and that the Bills have been so good and have found their game in Josh Allen, here's what he had to say. Dolphins fans look at Josh Allen and he's the guy like, see, that's why you have to be patient. Now look, comparing Josh Allen to Tua is, is, is not a fair thing because Josh Allen clearly size, arm strength. I mean, there are advantages he clearly has over Tua. Not many guys have the arm strength or size that Josh Allen has. But I think from a development standpoint, he's the guy Dolphins fans look at and say, see, Bills took him. Struggled a bit. There was all these concerns about his accuracy and could he be that guy? They worked with him, and now he's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. And why could it to be, in theory, take that track? Maybe not, okay, be Josh Allen, but improve to the point where he could be a consistent NFL quarterback and your guy for the next five, ten years. So that full interview is up on the Buffalo Plus YouTube channel. Yeah, and great what Will said there was measured and thought out and not a hot take yeah right that's not the way most people handle this like if your guy at quarterback isn't a superstar right away they're ready to dump him yeah i'm not that big on Tua. i agree long-term guy yeah but he certainly can be better and he certainly could have more support but i think it's the idea that watson could be available that has changed all of it. and you need to put in perspective 
Josh Allen's don't grow on trees. Josh Allen has he's bucked. He's always the he is, example, too, where I'm like, right, but that he's is... the example at the far end. It's like, oh, you draft a quarterback in yeah. the sixth round. No, you Tom Brady the... was drafted in the right. sixth yeah, round. Yeah, you can like, win the lottery, too. Right, like, right, one like of those those jumps, yeah. what Josh Allen has did from year two to year three does not happen. Actually, it's never happened. From a guy to be so critical and, and to be so criticized and, and to increase his passer rating and, and completion percentage, nobody's ever done that before. Yeah. So, so to sit there and be like, well, Tua could be this guy. But the difference with Josh has that Tua doesn't have. Josh stability. is a considerably better athlete. Yeah. And considerably stability. better arm. Yeah. Yes, and, and we'll the, talk more the, about that, the whole team say, behind it. All those things matter. Let's jump into the injury report, though, sponsored by UR Medicine Sports Medicine. A shorter list, but there's a couple guys that stand out. Obviously, Dawson Knox, he had hand surgery during the bye week. He's expected to be out for about three weeks. Uh, Spencer Brown, back injury, did not practice. Some of those other guys out there as well. Um Dawson Knox is going to be out for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now Tommy Sweeney, Dan, yeah. is going to be kind of taking over that role. What do you expect from Sweeney? Tommy Sweeney. Well, they say that they, <laughs> they say that, that the playbook is not going to change much, that he is going to do everything that Dawson Knox is, you know, was doing in week one. I don't know if he has the athletic ability to do it, but he was another guy that was having a good rookie year. Last year, missed all of COVID. Earlier this offseason, Brian Abel called him pretty much a rookie because he had to learn everything over again. It's a big opportunity. He caught a touchdown pass in Nashville. Hopefully he can build off it. And you heard Josh this week. He's a big fan of Sweeney. He is. I think he says one of the most interesting guys on the team. He did say the word interesting. Not team, like not, human. But yeah, then he, he said he couldn't go, go into, into why. Yeah. 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 A lot of questions. Old soul. Yeah. I we'll was say, old out. soul, yeah. yeah. Interesting music days. All right, coming up, we're talking more about quarterbacks, and we have our special segment, the mic drop, the handling of the franchise guy, and how to do it right. We'll have that coming up after the break. Welcome back to Buffalo Plus. It's time for our favorite segment, the mic drop. Mike Catalan here. here. We're talking about quarterbacks, the Bills and Dolphins, two examples of kind of different sides of the spectrum. What is your mic drop for this week? Well, I look at it this way. People talk about these two franchises and constantly say the Dolphins were always looking for a replacement from Dan Marino. The mm -hmm. Bills looking for the replacement from Jim Kelly. And the Bills went two decades. They never found that guy. They found little parts. Miami still hasn't found their guy yet. The Bills tried on multiple occasions. But this is the first time they've gotten it right. And why did they get it right? Yes, Josh Allen is immensely talented, but they also had a franchise and an organization that was all in it together. I don't think it works unless you do that. Look, the Bills made some mistakes early when it came to Josh Allen, very early when they had Nate Peterman and they didn't really have a veteran around him. And then Josh was thrown in there, but he's a tough kid. They knew it. But what they've done with him, they stuck with the same coordinators, the same offensive coaches. They've gone out and got him the weapons, and they have supported him top to bottom in the organization. And he's rewarded them with that support by playing great and becoming a superstar. And look at Tua. He gets drafted into Miami. He's coming off an injury. Some people thought maybe Tua wouldn't even be playing as a rookie year. And then they decided, out of the blue, sit Fitz and throw him out there. Played okay, won some games as a team guy, and then boom, he's out of the game again. And then it's back to Fitz. And there were questions about how they handled it. And as we talked about this whole offseason, it's been all about Deshaun Watson. Let me tell you something. If you're Miami, you could have said, we're not interested publicly in Deshaun Watson. And then if you make the trade, you make the trade. Mm -hmm. So be it. That's the way things go. This organization has failed at every level. If they believe Tua has any kind of a chance, Good organizations support their guy until they don't want to support him anymore. Miami bailed on Tua pretty early, and this may be it. Wow. You like that? That's that like was, watching, that like, was amazing. Mozart in the, <laughs> this yeah. is what happens in the back of the sports office, too. Yeah, this this yeah. is what it is. This is a daily thing we just decided he, to broadcast. He, he, stands, we just up broadcast as, he stands up as I well. Do. <laughs> I do. There's a plexiglass divider since pre-pandemic, and we just talk. Yeah, Chuck Wade used to work with us. Used to, I, I'd have, like, a pretzel stick and stand there and talk, and they would laugh. Get a pretzel stick. And I would just pontificate. Okay. So we need pontificate. But you're exactly right. Where they, yeah. they, they could have squashed this, had every sense the way. I look at other quarterbacks they've moved on from, even with the Eagles. Like, like they still said all the right things publicly about Wentz before yeah. they moved on. Yeah. Until the, that's right. the point. Do it. Yeah. Yes. You know, Until there's a point. And they were at they that point. They drafted Hurts yeah. but still said it's Wentz. They still said Wentz is our right. guy and all yeah. of these things. Yeah. Even when they – like they wouldn't name a starter. But you, like Wentz was never – Put through the ringer like this. This yeah. is why I say he's your guy until he's not. It's a great yeah. way to put Tua it. has not yeah. really gotten and a fair chance. And you got chance. to bring in Nate Peterman into that mic drop, wow. which is just like, 
Chef's kiss. Peter, we love it. Yeah. He's the guy. Yeah, he is. We also got to talk to our great sponsor, Connors and Ferris. We talked to Greg Connors every week to get his take on what he thinks is going to happen this week and how he dealt with the bye. And this is what he had to say. It's been a while since they've been home. And, uh, you know, even after the, they came home from the Titans loss, there was people out at the airport welcoming them back. So I think having the Bills Mafia welcome them back home, the comforts of being back in Orchard Park, uh, and then seeing that defense dominate that offensive team again. Um, I don't think they're going to shut them out. I think the, uh, the, the Dolphins are going to go for the points if they have an opportunity to get them. And, and I think the Bills are going to put up 35 points, and I think the Dolphins will put up 10. It's interesting that Greg says if they, they get an opportunity because yeah. the two shutouts the Bills had, their opponent early in the game had chances yeah. for points. Mm -hmm. But when you're playing against the Bills offense, you, you don't want the field goal. Correct. Yeah. So Correct. they you didn't go, go for, for the field goal. Yep. They went for touchdowns. The Bills stopped them, and the rest of the game they owned it. Yeah, that seems about right. We'll have to see. All right, coming up, we're going to have our picks and predictions for the game. The Bills, they look for maybe another shutout. Why not? We'll have it. our predictions coming up. Welcome back to Buffalo Plus. The Bills getting ready for the Dolphins Sunday. Uh, Buffalo is 13 and a half point favorites. But before we get yeah. into that game, let's talk about some other favorites, Dan. Yeah, yeah, so best bets for the week as well. I'm heating up. Just got off to a rough start a couple weeks ago. <laughs> and my best bets that are up on buffaloplus.com. This week, I have bet the last four weeks against the Carolina Panthers. And I will do it again. <laughs> Give me the Falcons <laughs> minus three against the the Panthers. Look, the Panthers started 3-0. and Everybody was talking about how great they are and how they're number one ranked defense. They played the Jets, they played the Saints, and they played the Texans. Guess what? They played four real teams since then. They've lost all four of them. They got Actually, the Giants aren't even a real team, and they got blown out by them. I'll take the Falcons, who can win games. Yeah. It's funny. You're picking the one non-team as the Eagles. Their two wins are against the Falcons and the Panthers. <laughs> So there you go. There you go. All right, well, let's get into your pick for the game then as well. Yeah, I think this is a get-right game for the Bills. I think we've talked about it before about this is maybe a, a week to pad the stats. I think they bounce back. Sean McDermott undefeated after bye weeks. We know they beat them 35 to nothing in Miami. I think they put up another 35-plus points in this one. Two has looked better. The Dolphins have been able to score, but I think this one is easy. I think they cover. I think this game goes over. I think this is a Bills win from start to finish. All right, I have my prediction as well, and here's, here's it. The fact that Josh Allen didn't win the AFC Offensive Player of the Week last time the Bills played the Dolphins, so he's due. We know how well he's played against Miami. I just think it's going to be another high-scoring game for the Bills, a get-right game like Dan talked about. I have them winning 38-14. They should win this game. Good yeah. teams win this game. They should win. I think Allen's won it three times against the Dolphins, right? Yeah. Every season he's gotten one. All right, so this will be his chance. Yeah, this is a well, blowout. The Bills are the better team. I think that loss for Miami when they had a chance to at least feel a little bit better didn't happen. Confusion about the trade deadline, what the franchise is doing. They're not coming to Buffalo and win. Almost identical score to Jenna. I have the Bills winning it 38-13 to to go to 5-2 and two on the year. I did not copy you. That is no. incredible. Okay. Yeah, we, were yeah. we all got 38 points. We I all did that say, on our own. Yeah. Let's do a quick look at our picks so far this uh. season. I want to make sure we circle that. Mike's record. Look at that. Three and three. Dan and I are tied. The picture doesn't have a hoodie on me. That's yeah. weird. I, we need to update it. By mm. the way, uh, quick pick on the uh, World Series. Well, that was part of my Falcons pick. Atlanta riding high in the <laughs> World Series. This is incredible. Dan. Big Braves fan. I was going to say, if you couldn't tell. All right, thank you so much for joining us. Please be sure to check out Buffalo Plus on YouTube as well as buffaloplus.com for all your post-game coverage. For Dan and Mike, I'm Jenna. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time on the Buffalo Plus channel.